Hey guys, welcome to a brand new AI Plays Football Tutorial Series Part 1. A lot of you have been asking me to make tutorial videos about some of the AI projects that I work on. So what we are going to do today is to step by step recreate a reinforcement learning algorithm that teaches an AI agent how to score goals in football or soccer like you see on the screen here. So in this series what we are going to do is we will implement completely from scratch a bare bones version of a reinforcement learning algorithm known as proximal policy optimization or PPO in short. We'll go over the details of this algorithm as we start implementing it. So let's get started. A few months back, the Google research team released this football game environment for advancing reinforcement learning research. Uh, it supports multiple game modes and practice modes uh, which we can use to benchmark our AI algorithm and kind of compare it with the state of the art results. Uh, we'll be using this environment for our tutorial so let's try to install this first. So let's go to Google and search for Google football environment uh, and you should be able to see a GitHub link to the repository somewhere in the search results. Okay, uh, now that we are here, let's scroll down to the installation steps in, in README. Here you will see it only supports Linux uh, at the time of me making this video. So uh, make sure you are using Ubuntu. Now go to the file manager and pick a location where you want to create this project. Uh, we'll right click here and pull up the terminal uh, at this location. So let's use the make directory command to create a folder named uh, football-project and then change directory into a football project uh, using the cd command. Okay, uh, next up uh, let's create a virtual environment and, uh, and we'll call it football env. Uh, this step is optional, uh, but I recommend doing it because uh, virtual environments uh, tend to help in not messing up your system environment, like even if something goes wrong during installation. Now let's activate the newly created uh, virtual environment. And uh, just make sure it fires up correctly. Um, let's install the uh, system packages first. Uh, so copy paste this line, uh, this command from the instructions on GitHub. Now I already have these installed, so uh, it will be quick for me. But if you are doing this for the first time on your system, uh, it might take a while. So maybe uh, go watch some of my other videos in the meanwhile. Now let's install the actual football package. I'll install the GPU version here since I have a CUDA enabled uh, NVIDIA GPU but if you do not have one uh, you may also install the CPU version although I, I do not recommend that since it will be very slow. Uh, make sure you uh, mention the version to be 1.0 uh, it's quite possible that in the future a newer version may not support this uh, the code that we'll write in this tutorial. Okay, uh, now that this is done, uh, we only need to install one more dependency for this project. So uh, we'll do uh, pip3 install uh, Keras. Uh, Keras is the uh, deep learning framework uh, on top of TensorFlow, uh, which we'll use to uh, write our neural networks. Okay, uh, now our Python environment is ready to run uh, this particular football environment. Uh, open the project directory that we created uh, in an editor of your choice. Uh, I'm using PyCharm here. Uh, you may use any other, but uh, just make sure that your project is set to use uh, the virtual environment that we just created and, and not the default system environment. Okay, so uh, now let's go ahead and uh, create a new Python file uh, and uh, we'll call it train. Now let's import uh, gfootball.env as football env. Uh, now we want to create uh, our football environment using this.
will pass three arguments to the uh, create environment helper function. Um, first one is uh, env underscore name. Uh, this helps us to choose uh, what kind of game mode uh, we want our AI to play in. Uh, so, for example, if we want to play in a full uh, 11 versus 11 mode or maybe a practice mode, we can choose that here. So, for this tutorial, let's go with the open goal uh, practice mode. Uh, next, uh, we want to pass a representation argument. Uh, this signifies uh, what kind of observation we want uh, to use uh, to describe the state of our game. So, in our case, uh, we are building an uh, image-based or a vision-based bot. So, the input needs to be a frame or the image of the game. So, for this reason, uh, we will go with a pixel type representation. And the last keyword is render. Uh, we will set this particular argument to true, uh, which simply says that we want to render the screen uh, or the image of the game on your particular display. Okay, uh, now that we have the environment, uh, let's hit reset and see if it works as expected. Uh, let's go ahead and execute this script. There you go. If you followed every step till now successfully, uh, then you should be uh, able to see a pop-up window like the one I just showed. Uh, and that should confirm that your installation is working perfectly. Now that our football environment is working well, let's take a moment to understand how our AI agent will interact with and uh, navigate through this environment. So uh, first step, uh, our agent will observe the current state of this environment by taking the image uh, or the frame of the game as input. Next, based on this state, uh, it will decide what action to take. Once that action is taken, the environment will give a feedback uh, back to our agent showing how good or bad that action was uh, in the form of a reward. This will enable our agent to slowly learn over time what actions are good and what actions are bad based on observing the reward and changing its decision policy. Alright, back to the code. Let's try to see what the state or observation is for our environment. This is given by the observation space uh, variable inside our environment. Let's print it out. Also, uh, let's see how many actions are available for our agent to take. This is given by the action space variable inside our environment. Okay, done. Let's quickly run this and see what it prints out. So it seems like the environment gives us a 72 cross 96 RGB image as, as the state or observation. It means 72 pixels height wise and 96 breadth wise. And there are a total of 21 actions available to us uh, like move left, move right, pass, shoot, cross, etc. Uh, you need to look this up. Uh, as to which action corresponds to what number uh, that is written here. And uh, you can look this up into the paper or the document they have provided on their GitHub. All right, I'm going to have to end the part one here since it's pushing the 10 minute mark. Hopefully you are able to keep up so far with the installation process and execution of this environment. In next part of this series, uh, the real fun begins as we start to implement the basic framework of proximal policy optimization and it should be out in about two to three days. Please leave any positive or negative feedback you have for me since this is the first time I'm uploading a hands-on coding tutorial on my channel. So make sure you leave a like or dislike below. And the link to the code for entire series is down below in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you soon.